I just saw it. All right. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Angular Air. I hope we are live. Let's uh, see if we are. I think we are. Uh, we are back at it again. I'm your host, Justin Schwarzenberger. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about Zone.js and getting in depth with that with Angular. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's say hi to our panelists, and then we'll meet our guests, and then we'll get the show rolling. Joining us today, we've got Alyssa with us. Alyssa, what's going on? Uh -oh, hello, hello. Here. It's so Alyssa, good to be <laughs> And Bonnie's with us. Bonnie, how's it going? Good, good. I'm very excited today. We are too. We are too. Mike, what's going on, Mike? Uh, not too much. Happy hump day to everyone. Yes. <laughs> Halfway through week. the week. Middle of the week. Is it the middle of the week for everybody? Or I guess does it depend on if you start your week on Sunday or Saturday or Monday? I guess it depends, right? I'm Over talking here, about it's, whatever. it's like the downhill <laughs> side now. It's, All right, it's nice. close. It's somewhere near the middle-ish, right? All right. Uh, our guest today, Ja. How's it going, Ja? Hi, um, I'm there, everybody. Uh, my name is Jody, and I'm very excited to be here to talk about some JS. Thank you for having me here. Well, thanks for joining us, we're, and thanks for being on the show. We're, we're super stoked to have you on here. Uh, you just got done in Houston, right? Well, maybe not in yes, Houston, yes. but on NG Houston? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, with Bonnie, and it is uh, pretty, uh, a lot of fun. And uh, that's also my first time to explain uh, Zoom.js in such detail. I'm so excited to uh, deep dive more here. Yeah. So I ran into Jolly at uh, uh, Angular Connect, and we were talking about Zoom.js. And I've been interested because because uh, Angular Ivy, right? So many people are talking about Angular Ivy, and Zoom.js ties into Angular Ivy, and you and and so. Like you need to understand at least a little bit of it. And a lot of people don't uh, pay attention to Zone JS because we take it for granted because it's just there and we can use it. We can take advantage of it uh, without really understanding too much about it. And so uh, I really wanted to understand it. But the thing is, Zone JS can be a little abstract and a little complex. Uh, and and Angie Houston, as you know, is really great for beginners. We try to uh, really welcome a lot of beginners there. So I said, I want you to come on Angie Houston and really break it down like intro to zone js like tell us from the very beginning very simple and so he did that and then i said now i want you to kind of go a little bit more into deep dive um so go and do the simple stuff on ng houston and then anyone who's watching this if you want you can go back later uh go back and watch that uh to get the basics and then he's going to go back over that a little bit more quickly um so that he has time to dive into more detail yeah thank you thank you bye very cool. So we have this other reference video that people can go and watch to get that intro to Zone JS, like you're mentioning. And then for our episode here right now, we're going to be diving more in deep in, in terms of it playing out in Angular. Very cool. Yeah. All right, Tal, do you want to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself so that we can kind of introduce to you what you got going on, that sort of thing, and then we can kind of dive into it? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, OK, uh, so I, I want to share my screen and do some uh, introduction and begin the, the show. Yeah. Okay. And we can see that now, so we're good. Okay, okay. Thank you. And so uh, I'm very happy to be here to talk about Zone.js in depth. And just like uh, Bonnie said, uh, I had a, a basic introduction show in early in J. Houston. So if you don't uh, if you want to know about the basic introduction, please see that video. And I will go over the introduction uh, very quickly. Uh, so my name is Jali, and uh, I will join uh, this talk next week. And uh, so I, I'm, I have contributed to ZoomJS about three years, and now I'm the co-donor of ZoomJS package, also the, uh, the collaborator of Angular. So uh, I will talk uh, a lot talk, talk about uh, ZoomJS and why we need ZoomJS, some basic introduction, uh, but I will uh, mainly talk about uh, some detailed feature API and flags that may help user to uh, develop and test uh, Angular application more easily. So ZoomJS is a library to provide a uh, execution context to persist across a synchronized task. Uh, this is a library created by a brand for, I think it's 60 years ago, inspired by Dart language. And uh, so it is uh, very beginning. It is the portion uh, uh, 
uh, migration from the Dutch language. So ZoomJS can provide a uh, execution context, also a lot of asynchronous lifecycle hooks to monitor uh, all the status uh, of the asynchronous tasks. And also it provides a generic error handler for the asynchronous operations. And so I will uh, <coughs> explain those things very quickly. So first is the execution context. Uh, so execution context is a, a abstract con concept to hold all the environment information that the current code is being executed. So this is a quick example about what execution context is. We have a function here, and when, when we run it, and the execution context will provide all these, all those function need, the scope, and uh, this, the keyword this. In this example, this will be the global. And a more uh, complex one is this uh, example. So we have a test function here, and depends on how we call this function, the this, the value of this will change. So it will be a test object here, and if we just get another reference of the function, the, the, the this will become global again. And if we use apply, it will be the apply context. It will be the new object here. And if we use a JavaScript function bind, it will be the, the bind object. So this will be a, a very, a, the, the value of this will change depends on how we uh, execute this function. So execute context in JavaScript will determine the scope, uh, the variables and function that, that the, uh, the target function can access, also de determine the value of this. So this is the, the basic JavaScript uh, knowledge. So what ZoomJS does, it provides uh, additional this, uh, additional uh, execution context. So in this code, we run a function into a zone. So just imagine if some function was executed in a zone, uh, suddenly we have an additional uh, execution context. Uh, let's assume this additional execution context named the zone list. And this zone list uh, execution context value will always be, uh, be the zone. And despite it is, uh, it is running in a synchronized context or a, a synchronized callback. So in the line four, the zone list will be zone. And in the line 10, here it is a callback of set timeout. So this, we can still access this new additional zone this action context keyword. And it will also be zone because the zone this here will preserve the zone, the extreme context when it is scheduled. So in line five, when the site timeout is scheduled, it just saves the, the zone this. And in the callback of the site timeout, the zone this context will be still in the zone. So basically, every asynchronous operation of JavaScript, such as set timeout and promise them and SML HTTP request, any asynchronous operation, the callback, will keep the same zone this execution context if they are running in the same zone. So this is the most uh, fundamental feature of ZoneJS, and I think this is the most original uh, motivation of the, the ZoneJS zone thing. So ZoneJS then is is there to handle, like you're saying, to handle all that this binding for us for those methods like set timeout and things that that have that callback function that could potentially get a different this, right? ZoneJS is wrapping around so that it, it encapsulates that so that we can have knowledge of working with that and, and have some consistency across that. Yeah? Yes, yes. The, the original this will still work. So ZoneJS is an additional one to, to can handle all the sync and asynchronize. Uh, execution context, yeah. And okay, so in uh, execution context provided by ZoneJS, it is a uh, new, new things and uh, for the uh, synchronized all the synchronized operations, zones 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 this new execution context will be the same value and of the zone which the function is running in. So of course we didn't invent a new keyword zones. Uh, we need to use the, the normal syntax to get this value. So the, the way is to call zone.current. So zone is a global variable and current is a static property of zone. So we can get zone this whenever we want by calling the zone.current and it will be the zone, uh, the function currently running in. And also uh, zone.js provide a lot of uh, lifecycle hooks 
uh, during the life cycle of the, all the asynchronous operations. And there is a, a bunch of them. I, I will explain uh, several of the most fre frequently used one to explain how it works. So for example, we have a set timeout here. It is very simple. And from this graph, the stack is the, the JavaScript running uh, the main stack. And the web API is the browser on Node.js JavaScript uh, VM. And macro task queue, and we know JavaScript engine. We have macro task, macro task, and the event task. And this is the JavaScript uh, macro task queue. And we can uh, talk about this uh, zone task state later. And when this function is running, and first we call set timeout, and then uh, in and from the main stack, we will call the uh, the, the uh, browser on Node.js to tell we have a method will be scheduled. Uh, one second later. And after that, the main stack is cleared. And after one second, the uh, the browser just uh, push this uh, function callback to the macro task queue. And the macro task queue find out, okay, I'm the first one, no one is waiting. So I will just execute this uh, function callback into the main stack. So this is basically how JavaScript uh, execute the asynchronous operations such as the timeout. Okay, let's go to the, oh, sorry. Jump out of this one. Okay, so just in JavaScript operation, the set timeout will be executing later. So the, the run order of this very simple operation, A, A, B, C, D, in fact, it will be uh, running like this. For example, if we want to uh, measure some performance of A, B, C, D, this will never work because it will only marry the performance of A, B, C, D will run after the performance end. So just in this virtualized graph, the C, D will not be calculated. So let's see how the set time will work uh, in, inside the zone. So here we have a zone. We define the name. It is uh, it's called hook. And we def define several uh, lifecycle hooks uh, on schedule task, on evoke task, on and on has task. So again, we back to this uh, visualized graph. Oh, sorry. So when we run, first we have a new zone here when we call fork, and we run a function. And now when we call set timeout, in the earlier example, it will call the, the browser or Node.js directly to schedule a function. But here, because it is running a zone. So before we send this function directly to the, the browser, we will call on schedule task first because it's inside the zone and zone define this callback. And in, inside this on schedule task, we can do anything we want. And we can do some uh, monitoring, logging, tracing stuff. And zone uh, after this on schedule task is called, and it will uh, really send uh, to call the native set time API to schedule this function one, uh, one second later. And this on site task mean, means at first this zone is stable. There are no tasks. We can we can see the macro task count. This is the internal task state inside zone is zero. So zone is stable. And once there are some new tasks happened in this zone, it will become unstable. So there is a new task. So when the, the task state become from zero to one or from one to zero, this on has task uh, lifecycle host will be triggered. And we can see this on, because now we have a new task is scheduled, this on has task will also be triggered. And we can see internally, we have macro task count from zero to one. And after that, the set timeout really finished and the main stack was clear. And after one second, the browser send this callback to the macro task queue. And again, in the earlier example, now the set timeout is the first one, it will be executed in the stack. But because we are in a zone, before we run this uh, console log here, we will run this uh, lifecycle hooks on evoke task first. Of course, we can still do some monitoring logging here. And after the, the hook was invoked, and we really uh, run this uh, callback the user provided. And finally, because this uh, callback is invoked, this macro task is consumed and it becomes uh, stable because the macro task will become, the count will become from one to zero. So this on has task 
will be triggered again, we can see the count become one to zero. The zone becomes stable again. So this is uh, basically the, the uh, how those uh, lifecycle hooks provided by zone uh, works in the set timeout uh, process. Can I jump in for a second, Ja? He's going through yes. this really quickly, and Fergus had a good comment on the chat that <laughs> he's going really fast. And the reason he's going really fast is because he just went through all of this part uh, in a lot of detail on NG Houston. And we stopped him many times and asked him questions all through these slides. So uh, if, if he's frying your brain right now, don't worry, because you can go watch that uh, later. And it's it, and he's going through the same thing a lot slower. But uh, but the thing is, he ran out of time. So that's why. Thank you, Juan. Sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. OK, so a, so back, uh, back to the earlier example. So if we want to really uh, measure the performance of A, B, C, D, we can do like this. And we can run in a zone. And in zone, we provide the uninvoked task hook. And we can mirror the, the, the callback here. And because this is uninvoked task, will uh, be uh, triggered when we call the callback of C and D of this set timeout. So both A, B, C, D, the performance will be uh, mirrored. So this is uh, uh, another real, realized graph here. We have performance start and both happened of the CD callback. Tell him, say, Mario, yeah. I'm on Angular Air right now, man. <laughs> I have to get back to you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's busy. <laughs> <laughs> So the zone is allowing us to be able to track all these synchronous and asynchronous calls within a set of, of code so that we can understand uh, are all those operations done and completed? And then also like you're showing here, additional things that we could do like measure performance of each of those and all that stuff, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So basically uh, those, uh, those hooks will trigger when, the, when the, uh, a synchronized operation is being scheduled, is being invoked, is being canceled, and also not only the task because uh, the set timeout promise a promise their task, and we just run a synchronous function. It can also be monitored. So there is another set of non-task uh, operations can be triggered. As a, uh, there are another set of hooks. Okay. So besides of all, all those life cycle hooks, ZoomJS also provide a synchronized error handling. So imagine we have a set timeout, uh, promise in, there are error happens inside. And without ZoomJS, it is very uh, difficult to handle those error uh, friendly, user friendly. But with ZoomJS, we can have a, a globally um, a central location. Uh, we provide uh, on handle error left uh, hooks. And any error happens in the synchronous operation inside this zone can trigger this on handle error callbacks. So we can handle error in a central location. But uh, to be noticed, here we have we use a run guarded uh, function, not to run. Because if we use dot to run, uh, the error will not be handled. And we use run guarded, this on handle error will be triggered. OK. So I will introduce some detailed uh, zone API. So this zone current uh, we talked about earlier, it will return the current zone. And there is a root zone. So if we don't, we, if we just uh, get the, the current zone uh, outside of any of the zone run, it, it will still not undefined on, on now. It will be a, a zone called root zone. And if we fork uh, a new zone and in, inside we use zone current, it will be exactly the, the, the zone uh, we run, run here. And we can see uh, the, this fork call. So if we want to uh, propagate a new zone, we use zone.fork method, and we provide a zone spec interface. In this zone spec object, we have a name which is required, and the other lifecycle hooks, they are optional. We don't need to provide them. And if we want to do something special, uh, user uh, specified code, we can pro provide those callbacks. And when we fork a zone, in the next page, we pro propagate a new zone. For example, now we have a stack trace zone to trace the error stack trace, and we define on schedule task and on invoke task. And we have another zone and fork from this 
uh, stack trace zone, and we only define uninvoked task. And if we use this log, log zone to run some code inside, and both of those two zones, the log zone and stack trace zone, the uninvoked task will be triggered. And also, the, the unscheduled task of stack trace zone will be triggered. So this is the relationship of those zones. So we have a root zone, we have a stack trace zone, and we have log zone. So all those zones, the, the, uh, the lifecycle hooks will be triggered. So it, it uh, looks like a composition. Uh, it is not an uh, inheritance. It is like a composition of the different zones behavior. So uh, the zone propagation can compose different zone behaviors. So we can have different zones. Uh, one zone for stack trace, one zone for log, uh, one zone for some uh, chain, chain section. And this is exactly uh, what happened inside the ng zone. So ng zone, uh, if uh, there are some several flags, uh, there is a long stack trace flag, there is a, a web trace framework uh, flags. If you set those things to true, there are several pro uh, zone uh, propagate, not only the, uh, the Angular zone, there are several zone uh, propagate inside ng zone. So is that then the logic would be that you'd be like you're saying like uh, composed together like I want this specific stuff to run in a zone that I'm calling log zone, but it it okay. runs anytime anything that it came from or that it was made off of I guess uh, runs as well. So like you're mentioning a root zone and then stack trace zone if they run then log zone will get its its lifecycle hooks run on it as well. But then the the it's a way to like categorize the chunk that's running inside of there. To organize that, is that my understanding? That correct? Um, um, so, uh, sorry, I, I'm 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 not sure I, I understand. The, uh, so, so, so the, the logic is when you uh, run the log zone here, that the the sequence will be the uninvoked task of the log zone will be invoked first, and and then the 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 parent zone, the stack trace zone uninvoked task will be invoked, and then the root zone uninvoked task will be invoked. And so they will be a chain to the to the to the top, and that's because you made the log zone from the stack. You forked it from the stack trace zone, which was forked. Yeah, from yeah. The, yeah, okay. And yeah, then so yeah. in the concept of like why why do we want to compartmentalize these runs of zones? Is it to give us organization of saying, oh well, this ran the log zone. This is stuff that I expect to be doing like logging versus that. Is that kind of the yes. concept? Yes, yes, yes. So each zone will can take uh, take care of their own uh, responsibility to do something, and they can those zones back uh, zones back can be totally in, independent. So this log zone, this zones back can be shared to another application, and it don't need uh, has to be forked from a stack trace zone, maybe from some other task tracing zone or ng zone. So they can be shared, and the logic in the the lifecycle hooks can be shared. Hey, John, can you just go back real quick to the, the slide that had the uh, performance.start and performance.end so we can look at that with the, because with the, you went through that pretty quickly. Okay, uh, here, uh, is that right? No, the one with the, yeah. Can you, can you explain that one again? Because I think that's what, oh, okay, uh, sure. that's where the log zone comes in kind of for this use case maybe. I thought this was a really great example. Oh, okay. So, so here we run the A B C D inside the zone, and when the uh, the uh, when the set timeout uh, C, the, the callback of C uh, really invoked. Uh, so it uh, later after the line fourteen, and it will trigger the uninvoked task here. So here we only have one zone, so it will trigger the, the, the zone A uninvoked task callback, and this callback will equal to C. Will will be the C, the the real real callback we want to, to, to run. And so inside the on invoke task, what we do is add our own operation. So we add the performance start and we call the callback. The callback will be C here and we call performance end. So we marry the, the, the performance with C and then the D, the, the callback of this one will be uh, invoked, also trigger this on invoke task callback. So again, the callback will be D and the the callback D, the performance will be will be also be married. So all the ABCD uh, performance will be calculated together. 
So the challenge is if you want to wrap it in any kind of a performance or logging or, or anything like that, then what happens if you want to test your wrapper and then you need to wrap your wrapper and then you need to wrap your wrapper's wrapper? Yeah. <laughs> and then it just gets carried away from there. Okay, sorry. So go back to the slide you were on. I, I just, I didn't want you to, I know you have a lot to cover. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the, the propagation. So if we want to have a different zone for different responsibilities, we can use the fork to pro propagate them and the compose them, compose the, the, the behaviors, the functionalities. And another uh, method of zone provided called wrap. So it, it is kind of like the, the, the band function of JavaScript. For JavaScript, we band the function to a, to a target. So this function, the context is this, will always be the, the band target. And for the, the, the zone, uh, if we call the, the zone wrap, so this function will always run in the, the zone uh, we, we wrapped. So th this is uh, something like the, the similar behavior with that. And zone also provide uh, several function related to task. And we know we have the, uh, in JavaScript, we have the macro task, uh, macro task, or the event, event task. And there is a zone schedule macro task uh, method uh, functionality. So we can schedule a macro task. We provide a name, uh, which is easy for, the, for debug, and a callback function we want to run. So it looks like we want to do something like this. We, we, we have a promise, and then so we want some callback function to run uh, as soon as possible in the current event loop. But this zone schedule macro task uh, uh, it looks like uh, a much cheaper way, much e e effective way to, to, to do this. Because in, uh, for example, if we want to do something in the macro task queue in Angular to uh, use a promise result, and then the performance will be um, slower than this one because promise result will do a lot of the promise stuff. But we schedule this one, we, we just insert this callback function into the macro task queue. And of course, we zone also provide schedule macro task or schedule event task, but but I really didn't find any. I, I, I do know some uh, edge case use that API, but in the normal case, uh, we, we will only use schedule a macro task, not, not a macro task or event task. And also there are several uh, Originally, those APIs are internally, and recently, I think one month ago, those APIs also become public because we, we need them to be exposed. Um, the first one is uh, symbol. We will talk about why we need those uh, later. Uh, and uh, those, the symbol, this is something like a polyfill of the, the symbol of JavaScript, uh, ES 2015. Uh, because zone zone.js package didn't uh, depends on any other polyfill so we just implement a very easy uh, polyfill of symbol and also we provide a functionality to add users on uh, third party uh, synchronized uh, monkey patch so we can do like this but uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, clear documentation to, to let users know how to do that. I'm working on it. So if user has their own asynchronous uh, library, they can also add them to Zone. So basically, Zone, uh, the implementation uh, internally is monkey patch. So we just overwrite uh, the original, uh, such as the timeout, promise, and uh, uh, function delegate and provide some additional. Uh, functionality to it. So the use case of Zone is uh, the asynchronous test, uh, debug, perform smiring, uh, framework auto rendering, user action tracing, or some uh, resource releasing. So uh, I've used some quick example to, to demo them. So first one is long stack trees. Here we have uh, uh, two buttons and the first button will add the event listener to second button. The second button will throw an error. So here we can see this demo. Uh, I will see this very quick. And without without the zone, uh, if you uh, want to know detail, you can see the NGC student video. So without a zone, 
the, the error will only show this part. So we can only see that the error is here. We can only see some, something happened here, but we don't know the whole story. But if we use zone.js, we can see the whole story. We can see this error is from the very beginning. The where we uh, added the event listen to the first button and to the second button. Okay. And yes, and to the second button and then to the to the real uh, it's not it is freezing. All right. So it can see the whole story of the, the stack traces, even those uh, operations um, are, are separate. So these are two user operations. It's a two button clicks, but with the long stack trees, we can still find the all internal connection of them. So this feature also provided uh, by Zone.js and enabled in the Angular test. And the tracking, this is another example. So when a button is clicked in this uh, demo, uh, we randomly uh, generate a lot of nested set timeout. So in this example, we just want to show how many set timeout was scheduled, how many set timeout was uh, finished. So this is a very simple demo where we click start here. A lot of set timeout was scheduled and invoked. Finally, it becomes zero. So we can monitor the, the, the zone is stable or not, uh, what happened inside the zone. And we can also do performance uh, profiling and also releasing. I will demo, demo this one. So here we have, for example, uh, uh, this is a Node.js uh, demo. So Zone.js can, can work both in the browser, Node.js, and uh, all the mixed environments such as Electron. So in the example, I will use, use Node.js. So for example, we use the file system. So we open a file and we get a file descriptor. Imagine, imagine this file descriptor just like a SQL uh, uh, or a database connection. It is a very expensive resource. We need to close it after everything is done. And we want to do several things, several synchronized things. For example, read file and maybe a write file or do something with this file descriptor. Because they are asynchronized, we want to close after everything is done. So this is very hard because they are asynchronized. So we may need some flag like this. This task is done, this task is done. And when every task is done, we really close this file descriptor. And But the such kind of code will not be elegant because if we add another synchronized operation, we need to change a lot of the code. But with Zoom, it will be become very, very easy. That the application code we are not care don't need to care about the closings uh, any longer. We just use the on has task uh, hook, and when all the the macro task is done, we just close it. So it it separates the 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 close uh, resourcing, and it can do, done it automatically with the user uh, application code. And also, it can track the user action. For example. In this demo, we have a, I will refresh it. Uh, we have several button, and in this button, we do several HTTP requests, and this we do, we do several another HTTP requests. We want to know what happened when user click this button, and we can use Zoom to do that. For example, here the information is the button is clicked, and it make uh, it, it has made two HTTP requests, and HTTP request gets the, the response, and the performance of each HTTP request. So such kind of, code, such kind of, uh, of the user tracking things can be done by Zoom. And this is another uh, button. It got the same information and it can also be grouped. And so, but if you look at the uh, application code, they are just the, the user code. They don't need to care about the, the tracking things. They don't need to care about the performance memory things, the, the error stack tree things. The user just need to write the application code and all those uh, user tr tracing stuff can be done by zone. So then is that running that button click in that zone, then you get, you're saying you get all that stuff. Like if the code calls some other code that calls some other code that does a set timeout or asynchronous call, all that will be picked up because you wrap the button 
click call in a zone and zone knows how to dig all the way through that and, and track that context during that time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So here we, we have this main method. They are just add the event listener of those three buttons. So we, what we need to do is only to run this main method into a zone. So this zone will handle all the stuff. And then it's that monkey patching that goes on that is able to understand what it's tracking and all the way through the whole stack, essentially, right? Yes, yes. So we can get a lot of detailed information. For example, this is a very rough implementation. For example, here, we can know what, what is executed. The task source, we can know what kind of task, not only the, the tab, not only the macro task or micro task. From this code, we can know this, oh, this is the HTTP request. And okay, we can here we can know oh, this is a button click. We can know all the detailed information from those uh, the hooks, so we can do all kind of the, the tracking things, perform summary things, group things inside zone. And okay, and of course it, it can do the UI auto rendering. It, it, it is the the ng zone does. So here we have the button click, uh, timeout, and some. Uh, another button click. We change some data, and but we and we are rendering this data to the to the DOM. But we don't want to manually uh, do it. We just need to write those code and use Zoom to automatically uh, update uh, update the UI for us. So here we are. Okay. So HTTP, it will just rendering, timeout rendering, and rendering. So th this this is very similar, like a very simple implementation of the ng zone. So user just need to write the, the application code, and all the rendering stuff is done in the, the zone on invoke task. It will update the, the UI automatically. And of course, uh, Zone not only uh, care about the, the application code, it can also do a lot of stuff for the asynchronous test. Uh, the async and uh, fake async provided by Angular core testing, they are, all the functionality is provided by Zone.js. So the async uh, here, it will automatically know all the asynchronous things happen inside the, the test is done. So it will automatically call the done uh, the just been done function for the for the user. User don't need to uh, manually call done uh, in the the callback of the asynchronous operations, and also the fake sync uh, for long run uh, set timeout here. We don't really want to wait for ten seconds here, so we use a fake sync to make this uh, synchronized test to a synchronized uh, test uh, to make the test much faster. So we can use tick to move to advance the, the virtual clock uh, internally. So it will be much faster and stable. So, Zoom, so basically, all those functionality provided uh, provided by ZoomJS are used in Angular. So ng zone, all those test stuff, the, uh, the global error handling, and some debug treatment zone. And so ng zone provides two methods. I think those two methods are used very much by the developers. So ng zone run will make sure this function run inside Angular zone, so it will trigger transaction. And outside zone, it will not trigger transaction. It will run outside of, uh, of Angular zone. So I, I will talk some more detailed features of ZoomJS. Uh, the first, first one is module. So, uh, so because we have a lot of uh, asynchronous APIs, uh, such as timer, promise, request, animation frame, and ZoomJS basically monkey patch all the possible asynchronous APIs. But sometimes we may not want uh, the specified API to be monkey patched for better performance. Uh, the, the most frequently asked is the request animation frame. Uh, for example, in some uh, an, uh, web page, uh, there are a lot of animation. And in the animation request animation callback, there are no really the data change. So we because Zoom load, load the, those monkey, uh, monkey patch uh, separately, so we can disable uh, the specified API by defining a global variable here. <clears throat> so uh, we, we may see such kind of code in the polyfill.ts. So before load importing ZoomJS, we define a global variable like this. Um, 
you can check the, the detailed documentation in Zong.js uh, repo. So we define something like this. The request animation frame will not be monkey patched. That means it will use the native API, uh, but uh, the side effect will be the request animation frame, the callback will not inside ng-zone. So any data update will not automatically change, uh, trigger the change detection. And another example is uh, in Ionic v4, the custom elements uh, may also need to be uh, disabled because Ionic v4, everything is web component and it uses Stantial, uh, it's a, another library uh, developed by the Ionic. And because Ionic is still a Angular application, every web component is already inside ng zone. And so if we, uh, and in the recent version, I think it's a 0 0.9 version of ZoomJS. Uh, ZoomJS also monkey patched the custom elements API to make sure custom elements API also in the zone. So if we uh, e enable this flag, so both Ionic and custom element uh, will monkey patch the custom, custom, uh, custom element API. So the change detection will be triggered uh, twice that will slow down the performance. So we, we may also need to disable this one in Ionic V4. I, I think this already be handled by the Ionic uh, CRI. And sometimes we want to disable specif spe specified events. Uh, for example, the most scroll, most move, and those uh, very performance sensitive operations. And we can uh, define another global variables in this uh, format and patch the events, it is a re, we can add the events name here. And originally it is called blacklisted events. And recently it is renamed, but this one blacklisted events is will still work. And, but in the risk, uh, but it's uh, deprecated and please use the unpatched events, this new variable name. And th th this is uh, uh, some high key way. In some times, uh, we, we already introduced the uh, run outside Angular. It will run outside the Angular zone, but it will still in the root zone. So it will still have a little overhead of the performance. So for some application, it is very, very super uh, performance sensitive. So they may want to use the native uh, delegate directly. So there is a way to do that because ZoomJS keep a native delegate internally. So we can use those kind of syntax to call the set timeout, the, the native one. So the callback here will not in any zone. So this is uh, the, we will be the native way to, to, to do that for the uh, best performance. And, and so really quick on that, uh, like what would we be maybe thinking about in terms of when we might want to use this? So would this be something like that, say we had some code that we wrote or maybe third party code that say, had a set timeout to track like mouse movement all over the place or something that's happening, a lot of, of things that it's doing like that could potentially impact performance. Is this something that we say, okay, that would be the flag at which we want to maybe go all the way this way where we would say no zone, even at the root level do this or? Yes, so yeah, so for, for example, the set timeout may be not a good example, but for example, request animation frame, if we want to disable the request animation frame globally, we just need to uh, add this flag. So everything will be native. Uh, but uh, when, uh, so this use case, so in basically we want uh, request animation still in the zone, but, but for some small part of the application, uh, for example, a component or some function call, we want to request, request animation frame not inside uh, uh, the ng zone. And because request animation is too uh, performance sensitive, we also don't want to run outside Angular. For example, some very performance sensitive animation or some, something like that, we may need to uh, want to use uh, this one, uh, the, the native delegate. Yeah, that, that is use case. It, it's not that common, but there is several requests, a feature request from the uh, real applications. Yeah, but uh, let's just say that ZoomJS has, uh, has has such kind of the uh, functionality, the 
uh, capability to do that. But this is really a rare case. So basically, we just use the run outside Angular. It will basically uh, resolve the performance issue. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And promise. So uh, for example, if we use Angular, the promise we use is, in fact, uh, a zone of our promise, which is a zone, zone GS implemented uh, promise. Uh, it is a full feature promise past the promise A++ uh, test. And it already supported the, the new promise, uh, finally, API. And also, if some application can use Bluebird as the, uh, a more enhanced feature promise implementation, uh, Zone GS also uh, support integration with Bluebird to make sure all the additional API of Bluebird also in the zone. And uh, recently, I think in the uh, zone GS 0 0.10, uh, we already supported the new promise all settled API. And when the any become uh, TC39 stage four, we will also support any uh, very soon. And um, error handling. So I, I believe a lot of uh, most of the Angular developer may suffer from those. Can you go uh, back? Nice. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, so with that, with the zone aware promise, is that a way of handling the native in browser promise object? Yes, yes. Okay, so I, I knew that that was a concern if we weren't down leveling to ES5 uh, to be able to work with the ES6 promise. So this is how that's being managed by using the, the specific implementation of promise with the zone aware promise. Yeah, and yes. A question in the chat, does that also then satisfy the usage for async and await by using the zone aware promise? Yeah, that, that is a problem. Maybe, maybe not. there is no easy uh, solution for the native async await support, okay. uh, the ES, uh, ES 2017, uh, because that one used the uh, uh, native promise, uh, the na really native promise by the browser. And there is no way to monkey patch that one. So that's why it's still a pending issue for a long time. So we are still find a, a solution for that if sometime, maybe in the future, the, the, the browser will release something like the promise hook. We, we, we can already do that to the uh, native sync await support in Node.js because Node.js has the promise hook API exposed. But in the browser, we still need to find a solution. Of that, yeah. And just to be clear, that promise hook is the runtime, and especially in Node, allows you to listen to an event to say, "Hey, do you have a specific implementation of promise that you want to use?" Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And yes, the error handling, and I, I, I believe I'll, um, most of the Angular developers may suffer from this. Um, uh, some GS related stack traces. And so it is very hard to, to find out the, the meaningful application stack, trace, stack frames. So there is a way to make it easier. Uh, some GS provide a zone error package. If you import that, most of those stack traces will be gone. And also by importing zone error package, there is another feature, uh, the, the error class inheritance. For example, here we have my error, it tends error. And if we, if we throw my error, and we want to check this error instance of a my error, it will return false if we don't import this zone error package. But if we import that, this will return true, um, just as expected. And sometimes we only want this uh, inheritance feature without the, the blacklist uh, zone frame features. We can add this very long uh, flag uh, because this uh, remove stack frame uh, features will have some performance cost when we new uh, new error. Okay, and also Electron Zone GS support Electron, and because uh, Electron is a mixed environment, so for both browser and Node.js, so we can't just import Zone GS dist zone. We need to import uh, Zone GS dist zone mix. And there are also several electron specified API, such as manual screenshot shell. If we want to support them, we also need uh, to import another package called zone patch electron. Uh, 
So all those asynchronous API be also in the zone. And also we are recently support more and more uh, asynchronous API provided by the browser and Node.js to make sure the, uh, all those API callback we are also in zone. And uh, currently basic Node.js is focusing, uh, focusing on the, the test and the, there are several enhancements in the uh, past year. The first one is the fixed sync in, uh, integration with date now. So now if we have a date now, we want to calculate the duration of date now in the fixed sync, it will exactly the, the difference of the, the tick, uh, of the number we take. And also, um, Basically, fake sync did a similar thing with just clock. So if we have uh, some some user uh, familiar with the just clock usage, so they, they still want to use just clock, uh, it's totally fine. So if we use a just clock install, and if we de define this very long uh, flag to true, we don't need to write fake sync here anymore. The uh, the test case will automatically jump into the fake sync zone. So we can just Tick uh, something. Uh, use the clock tick, and everything will will work. Everything will just uh, like running in the fixing zone. It is just some uh, syntax sugar to make your code uh, shorter, and also the fixing also work with the RHS scheduler. So here, if we import this additional package, the RHS scheduler delay uh, or some other scheduler method will also work with the tick. And uh, this is uh, only for just me and Mocha. Uh, so we have some better timeout message um, to tell which timeout, what kind of uh, asynchronous task is still pending if timeout happened inside the uh, asynchronous test. And currently, uh, the, the, all those functionality uh, support Jasmine 3 and Mocha 5. And um, I'm planning to add support to, to Jest. Um, currently, the Jest Angular preset already support the, the basic support of to make the all the fake sync and sync work uh, in the Angular application. But uh, I want to add more uh, functionalities such as the error message. And Jest also have a lot of uh, fake timers uh, run out ticks method. I want to also support them too. So uh, in maybe in, in the near future, I will also add the, the JS support. And Zongjia uh, recently, uh, uh, the Angular 8, also added the differential loading. So Zongjia handle a lot of uh, the legacy browser support. And for the, so now we have a two package, one called Zong Evergreen, and another called ZoomJS, which is ZoomJS is a full package, uh, including both the legacy and the Evergreen uh, browser support. And for Evergreen, it will only support the newest <coughs> Evergreen browsers. Uh, if you're using the Angular CLI, this has this is already handled automatically. But in case you're not using Angular CLI, you can load the different loading uh, ZoomJS bundles in this way. You mean there are people who don't use the CLI? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in case. Yeah. yeah, just in case. Yeah. Um, okay. And this is the very new new feature. And I think th this PR it was more uh, yesterday <coughs> called the event bubbling uh, performance enhancement. Um, for example, we in this case we have a div and we have a button. And we, we um, they both uh, have a click event listener, and if we if we click this button because of the event bubbling, both of the, those uh, event handler will be triggered, and the change action will be uh, triggered twice. And such a such of a use case is very common in the Angular material or some other, especially the UI uh, library. So it is pretty uh, sensitive for the performance in such case. So in the, I think in the next, maybe uh, Angular 9 next RC release, uh, this one has already been merged to the master. So we have a new flag called ng zone event classing. If we set this flag to true, such kind of the event handling, the transaction only will be triggered once. 
And for, for detail, uh, you, you can check the PR, but uh, the final effect will be such kind of case will trigger uh, change detection once for better performance. But by default, this flag will be false for the backward uh, compatibility. And also uh, for the event listeners, because we use ZoomJS, there are several uh, APIs, additional APIs we can use. For example, here we have a button where we add two click event listeners and one mouse down listeners. And we can query all the event listeners by the event names. And uh, for example, we query the click, we can get click one and click two. And we can also remove all event listener of click. And without event name, we, we will remove all event, event listener for the, all the events. So those APIs are not available in the DOM. Uh, but if you we use ZoomJS, we can use them. Uh, we can use those uh, API for uh, convenience. And yeah, and ZoomJS is already merged into the Angular monorepo. And recently, it also uh, we also make the ZoomJS build uh, build tooling uh, from GOP.js to the Bazel. So now. Uh, Angular can reference ZoomJS everything uh, from source code instead of from the NPM package, and everything uh, built ZoomJS now it's uh, totally workable uh, in the Bazel. Um, yeah, and finally, um, I will thank you all the Angular community, uh, uh, Angular team, and especially Mishko, because three years ago, uh, ZoomJS is my first open source contribution. So Mishko spent a lot of time to guide me for how to write code, how to do tests, how to write the common documentation. So thank you for everyone. And thank you for Angular today to have me here to talk about ZoomJS. Thank you very much. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. It was great that, uh, you know, to get that understanding of, as you unfolded and talked about all that stuff with the zone stuff, in my mind, I started thinking about, oh, Oh, Angular's doing that here. Angular's doing that there, and then it like becomes this clearer picture of what's going on under the hood in Angular and how it's using Zone to pull off these things with change detection and and things like that. And these things that we hear about in terms of well, how do we implement uh, better performance and think about running things outside of the zone when we have a set timeout code or something like that. Like all this information helps to give a for me a clearer picture of of all that story, which is very cool. Very cool for sure. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's do a couple picks. If anybody has any picks, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, how about our panelists? Do we have any picks? Who we got? Mike's got a pick. What do you got, Mike? I, I have an egotistical pick. I, my pick is me. <laughs> uh, more specifically, I'm happy to announce that I have been reaccepted into the GDE program. So I am a Google developer expert again. Woohoo! Yay! That yeah. was my pick. So that was my pick. But you just said my pick. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Who else? I, Do you have any picks today? or? I'm pretty excited about uh, release candidate nine. Uh, Angular v9 is coming around the corner. And there's some very cool stuff. The Angular team has been working so hard. Uh, and I'm I'm really excited. So I'm going to say uh, release candidate B9 is my pick. And we have a RC1 of that that's available right now. Is that correct? Oh, is there? I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think RC0 or RC1. RC0, maybe RC0. I think RC0 is it right now. I was going to say, I've only played with zero, but if one zero. is out. Okay. Thank you, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> zero, RC0. <laughs> I forget we zero I, index that, right? <laughs> I, I also want uh, to pick uh, Jolly because I actually never really talked to Jolly before uh, I met him at Angular Connect. And then I saw like Mishko was a big fan and I'm like, well, who is this guy that Mishko likes so much, right? Uh, he's gotta be pretty cool. And I talked to him and he's just really great. And uh, I hadn't ever really uh, followed him or done anything. and, and uh, coming on and doing like he's done two solid hours of teaching uh, Zone JS and it was really great. Uh, so I I think that's cool. I'm really glad that we met you. Thank you, thank you, Bonnie. 
Welcome. Yeah, I, I'm super impressed by your depth of knowledge and your ability to explain it. I don't know if you needed any time at all to prep, but like, even if you took days to prep that, I'm still really impressed. <laughs> so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was telling uh, you at the end of Angie Houston, sometimes people who write these libraries don't necessarily make the best teachers because they've been looking at it so long that it seems like common sense to them. Um, but his explanations were he went through it really fast. But if you go back and watch it it's slowly, uh, it was really a great explanation. Thank you. <laughs> um, my pick is an article on uh, dev.2. Uh, by Mustafa on um, building more dynamic components with ng template outlet. So I will tweet out that link and put it in the show notes, but I just wanted to shout out for a really fancy article. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And Jod, do you have any picks you want to share? Uh, yeah, I, I'm always a big fan of the Angular in-depth blogs. I, I, I also contribute several uh, Zone.js related articles. Uh, there are a lot of uh, new knowledge from all the Angular experts. So yeah, that is very cool. Good there thing. was another article too about, uh, by Matthias uh, Juncker from Switzerland, uh, 10 things about Zone.js that you should know. Uh, yes, I, I know that. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Sorry, I'm out of picks, Justin. All right, sorry. perfect. Let's slid another one in there at the last Little. minute. Just, sorry. More picks, more picks, that's always good. <laughs> All right, John, thanks a ton for sharing your time and, and coming on and sharing this content with us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. All right, that's a wrap. See okay. everyone next time. Later. Yeah, thank you. Bye.